and it's a very interesting um, topic because it's so many different view or understanding on how to be born again. But I will read some from the Bible. Welcome to all of you, oh, but yeah. also be open to understand the deep, deep meaning. And it's written in the Bible. It's a very interesting yeah. question about to be born again, because in John 3, 1, uh, Nicodemus, there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, it's, it's also, he came in the night, he didn't want to show people, and he came with secret questions. He was a man with an open heart, and we have many religious people, they, 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 they are in the, in the church, they are fronting something, but they are not quite sure in the spirit. So pray that more people can come to the truth about to be born again. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born so is everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things happen? Or how can these things be? And you see here that they knew about the wind. What's the wind? It's it's some a lot of fake doctrines. It's, it's coming with the wind, it's coming from nowhere, it's no and it just wishes where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from. But it's about to be born of the spirit and it's the spirit and the living water. And how can this happen? Jesus is saying something. When he was by the well with the Samaritan woman. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisee had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, you see that Jesus, the disciple of Jesus, they baptized people after they have been baptized by John the Baptist also. It's about John he baptized, it's a, a, it's a baptism of repentance. But the baptism of Jesus, that you become one with him. So that's a big difference about like a, what many take, they take a baptism of repentance, but it's to be one with Christ. And then I shall continue. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Shikar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. No, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weird from his journey, said thus by the well, it was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciple had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is that you... Being a Jew, ask and drink from me, a Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. 
Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is who says to you, Give me a drink, we would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then you give, get the living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his son and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of the water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Jesus is the word to be born from above. It's about to <clears throat> when Jesus also said to Nicodemus to be born again, he using the word that you can translate to be born from above. You get born from heaven. When you are here and we have fallen away in sins and we are born of the devil. After when we sin against our conscience and we turn away from God, we get born by the devil. So, I will share a testimony or something happened some years ago. I was in prayer and suddenly I saw God was crying. Small tears fall down from his eyes on dry cracked mud. Many of you knew very well in the dry season, when the, the, the dry mud, it get very hard and it, it get broken. Small tears fall down from his eyes down on the dry cracked mud. Slowly the mud became softer and softer. Water started to flow from the throne and down on the mud or the soil. And God is crying. God is crying for all people on earth today. It's a lot of sorrow, but God is crying and his tears is falling upon people's heart. It's time for revival. It's time for harvest. It's so many people that God's tears is falling upon. And Jesus is also saying in some Bible verse, I take care of the people that God has given me, the Father has given me. And the same with us, we can only take care of the people that the Father is giving us. He has to call up on the people. He has to pour out his spirit. He has to let his tear fall upon people's heart. In Isaiah 45, God let, let the living water came up on the earth. And God created Adam from earth, mud. Listen carefully here. Rain down, you heaven, from above. In another translation, it's saying, dough rain, soft rain, come down and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open. Let them bring forth salvation. And let the righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. God call upon people. God's tears falling upon people's heart. And we need God's tears into our heart many times. Because when we are in tribulation, a lot of things, it's easy to get a, a, a hard heart. But then we need to be softened again by Lord's grace and mercy. But you see here that the living water that came down and it was created righteousness. It's fall upon the mud, it's fall upon people's hearts. God, our Heavenly Father, call upon people and let the spiritual living water come upon their hearts as seed for salvation. He create righteousness inside us. But we must receive it by faith. So we, how can we receive it? We receive things by listening, 
by reading. The Word of God, the New Testament, is the living water that are giving us salvation. It also, the Lord is saying that, um, who that call upon my name, Jesus is saying, who that shall call upon my name shall be saved. And we need to be saved almost every day from all kinds of situations. Therefore, you need to call upon the name of Jesus upon the situation to come true because then he bring and carry us through the problems. And it's also written in the Bible that who that believe shall be saved. But then in the in the, in Matthews that written in Hebrew, if you look at the meaning of the word to to believe is to be one, to be one with Christ, be one with the word of God, then you shall be saved. It's not only to believe, but you have to let the word of God, the living water, penetrate your mind, your soul, and your spirit. Then you shall be saved. Therefore, it also says, Paul is saying, you have to, you have, we have to work on our salvation with, with the fear. In John 7, on the law, you can see the Jesus is saying, On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him who would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus, because Jesus was not yet glorified. But this is the, the promise that when we receive the, the tears of the Lord, we receive, he created righteousness into us, and we said, yes, we want it. He also poured out his Spirit upon us. He gave us the Holy Spirit. So the living water can flow through us. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, promise. And it's so important to, to understand that the living water, what we read in the Bible, is not only for us. It's for the, if the living water shall flow from our spirit into other people's life. Like we are connected with Jesus. Jesus is the tree of life. And when we are the fruit, we are the fruit on the branches that give life to people today. We are the salt. We are the light today because Jesus is shining through us. His power, the salt, is inside us. So, it's so important to understand when we have Jesus, because Jesus is saying that I shall come, I, the Father shall sell the Holy Spirit, and we shall dwell inside you. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. It's a tremendous, tremendous promise. And you also, in Matthew 15, But though things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man, for out of the heart produce evil thoughts, murders, adult, fornication, theft, false witness, and blasphemy. In, for, before, all these bad things came out of our heart. But today, when you get born again, we get the Spirit, it shall flow living water to bring life to other people. I remember some years ago we had, we were invited for a big pastor's conference in India. And we had the tremendous three days. So people really get encouraged and people, they, because this, is, this church or this organization, they was a little dry out, but 
Mam and I, we were speaking and sharing in three days. And the last Saturday evening, we had a very, I should speak about the walking God's power and glory. And then the Lord said to me to read this from Isaiah 45 about the rain that should come upon the soil, upon the people's heart. And when I opened my Bible, it was outside meeting, suddenly dull rain, soft, soft rain came down upon all the people. It was about 350 pastors plus wives. So it's a lot of people on the field. And when I have stopped reading this prophetic word, it stopped. The, the snow rain, it stopped. And I continue to speak about the power and glory. And it was almost like the people get, get this promised water, the holy, what they call it, the water, the living water came up on all the pastors and the wives, the families. And I spoke about the, the, the power and glory. And then I told them, that I shall wash the feet to all of you. You came up on the stage. I wash your feet and then I will prophesy for you. Ask the Lord speak. If it's good or bad, I will do it. And uh, be ready. Be open to receive it. And and after way I have washed the feet and, and and prophesied for them, they took the, the Lord's Supper. And that's also a picture about to eat and drink of Jesus. Because Jesus is saying, you shall eat my flesh and you shall drink my blood. It sounds terrible. It sounds, it's not like us today. It's we are very civilized, but it's a, everything is about a spiritual meeting. When we are becoming, when we eat Jesus, we become one with him. We become close to him. Like we said, we shall be one with Christ as Christ is one with the Father. Jesus is the Son of God. He's born by God. He is God, like First John. And today when we get the part of this living water, we get born again by the Spirit. We become a part with Jesus like Jesus is a part with God, the Father. Like we get married, we get one flesh with our wife, it's also standing that we become one. I see that Mam and I, we have a lot of fun because by the years we have learned each other and, and, and we, we think the same things. Sometimes we start to say the same words and it's a little funny that we can see that we are also that Jesus speak to us both at the same time about the same message. So we knew that we knew that Lord is speaking to us. That's when we really come close together in the in, in, in the relationship with your spouse. You shall have the same with relationship with Jesus. You knew what Jesus is saying to you before he speak, because the, he is living inside you. You are the temple of the of Jesus and you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. In the next session I will speak about the new Jerusalem inside us. The new Jerusalem inside our heart, in our spirit. That's the next program. I will explain for you the promises in the Bible that the new we are. Because it's standing here, you cannot be a part of the heavenly, like Jesus said to Nicodemus, to come into the heavenly kingdom. The, and Jesus also said in another, the heavenly kingdom has come close to us. So when we get born again by the water and the spirit, we are no longer of this earth. We are living here, but we are also inside of a promised land in, in, in the heavenly. We have to walk into our promised land. But that's another teaching for the next program. But I shall continue what's happening in India. It was so tremendous because I was sitting there washing feet and 
that was perhaps not so tremendous for me, washing a lot of dirty feet. But it's an honor to wash people's feet. It's, a, it's something that you really show that you love them. Uh, I, so many times I have been washing feet, especially for leaders, and we are doing, so, so doing some crusades or something, to wash the feet for the team, to build the team closer together. And uh, I remember I, 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 a young couple came and I prophesied to the wife and not to the pastor, the husband. And then they went and they took the Lord's Supper and they, they, then a lot of other people came. And I continued, Mama and I were sitting there until 1 or 2 in the 2 a.m. in the night, washing feet. And then we went to bed. We were really tired. And then in the morning we came to go for breakfast. Uh, <clears throat> it, it was so tremendous. Out from the conference building, it was shining, a holy shine. It was, you saw really... The glory of God was shining out of the window. Many think that the glory of God is just you, that you are. Well, I was speaking yesterday about rolling around uh, on the on the ground and and you are doing a lot of funny things. The glory of God is holiness. The glory of God is when the glory of God is around us. The devil cannot touch us. The, if the glory of God is coming upon us. We will be set free. The demon has to run out. And if you are carried the glory of God and you walk and touch people, immediately the demon has to run out of people. But in that morning, I said to mom, we don't go inside and see. Uh, we don't want to disturb it. We go for breakfast. Then we can say, listen later on what's happening and we can listen. And then by breakfast, this young pastor came with the wife, and he had been doing like, almost like Jacob, battling with God, praying, God, this night or tomorrow morning, uh, you shall speak to me with your my name and prophesy to me. He really wanted, because he said, Oh God, you spoke to my wife and not me. I am the pastor, not my wife. And in India and many nations, you know, the wife is just there to take care of, of, of making foods and all these things. But the wife is so much more. God even spoke to the wife in front of him just to humble him a little. Sometimes God do that, that we can come down from the proudness because the proudness is from the devil. And he was in battle because his proudness battled with God. He was in, in trouble that night. He was like Jacob. He was desperate. He can be glad that he was walking straight out after that prayers. But God is mercy and, and he saw his heart. And that next morning, he, he told that a pastor, old pastor, came with locked eyes from the opposite side of the room. And he passed through the room, grabbed his t-shirt and prophesied to him with his name. And so many pastors, they really testify. They saw angels, they saw open heaven, they get revelations, they get advice. The Lord, the Spirit spoke to them what to do. And in the evening, we met with this young pastor to visit his church. And they had put up at the tent outside the church, and so much people came. He lifted his hands and started praying, like I was speaking about yesterday when Smith Wigglefort, when he lifted his hands and started praying, the glory of God came, the holiness, the whole heaven was open. And that happened that evening. Heaven get open. It was such a holiness that came down. And he was standing and praying and praying. And more and more people came. Church was filled up. The tent was filled up. And the whole street outside, the, the tent was filled up with people. 
the whole village came up on came to this meeting and we did not even not need to speak the gospel they just shouted we want jesus we want to we want jesus in our heart the tears of the lord has fall upon all hearts in the village and they came to get salvation to be born again by the water they already received the water but we shared the gospel the living water and they was filled with the spirit and they get born again that tremendous thing that all the pastors went home and a revival started in all the churches another time i will end up with a testimony from nepal we were in in the, in, the, in the central nepal mam and i were with some friends and in a church and in the end of the prayer line it was two young men and when i came to the the, the first of them i i put my hands on his chest and immediately he started to pray in tongues and and he was praying and praying he was not falling down he was standing under the power of the lord and after praying one hour in tongues the pastor started to get scared they said oh this is not all oh, what's happening but i said don't worry but we has to go for our next meetings i told the pastor please call us when he's coming back man tried to put some water take some water from water bottle and put on his head and and then he become almost like baptized so he start to pray even more so i said the pastor please call me when he's coming back from the spirit and one hour later the pastor called and he said oh this young man he was praying in two hours and when he stopped praying he said gave the name of three ladies that was living in the village beside that they has to come and surrender their life to Jesus and while he was saying that the three ladies knocked on the door they were there we are here to give us our life to Jesus we are here to be born again the tears of the father has fall upon the three ladies heart and and the holy spirit guide them to come in and to receive the word of god the living water to be born again another time if also in india in south india uh, we were in, in with our friend edison and the the lady and he, she was a housekeeper and we had a lot of I had a good time in the evening there and then i said to this wife do you want to be born again do you want to receive jesus he was a hindu and and then she said i have to go home and ask my husband and i was thinking oh that we will not see her again but just for 15 minutes later she came back with the husband and the husband also said I am here to receive Jesus. When the wife came home, he was sitting there with a nice suit ready to go with her back to Edison's home to the meeting we had to give his life to Jesus. Let us pray that the Lord's tear get poured out on all flesh around where we are doing the work. Let us prophesy to the the soil to the land where we are doing the work be fruitful because if we need to prophesy to the ground to the soil be fruitful that's representing the heart of the people we has to tell ask god please call upon people show us the people that you want us to bring in for harvest because then it's much easier to when we go out you say lord who is ready 
who is ready to receive. And if you exercise on this immediately and you listen to the Spirit, the Spirit will point on people that is ready, ready to take, uh, to receive Jesus. Sometimes it's a person that you don't like, that don't look so nice. We were in Karonga in Malawi in, in August, and a man, he was drunk, he was not proper dressed, he was not clean, he was dancing at a crusade. I went to him, I started dancing with him, showing love, gave him a hug, and he gave his life to Jesus. Next day he came sober, no drinking, but he and he had washed himself, and he gave his life to Jesus. He got born again. And the third day, he came to the conference in the church. And after that day, he has been every Sunday. And that the third day, he came also with a wife and two kids. And there were so many people start speaking. What has happened with this dirty, ugly man? He got born again. He received the tears of God. I follow the Spirit to show the love of Jesus, to share the gospel. So there how people get born again by the word of God, the living water and the spirit. God let his living water come down from heaven. Like Jesus was saying to the Nicodemus, it's about to be born from above. That's about to be born again, to be born from heaven. We was born into this earth <coughs> with our mothers and father, but we get born again by God, by the love of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus and the living word, the gospel, and we get filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how we get born again and never, never, ever leave it. Just let this grow and grow and grow inside you and let the living water flow read the bible read the bible and read the bible study 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 and fill yourself with the love of jesus and the living water L read about the love of jesus it's it is standing in the bible when you see a picture you just see the picture in the wide and, and high but when you see the love of Jesus, it's also the deep. Go deep into the love of Jesus and share that love to people. That make the harvest and people that never ever will fall away. I follow Jesus because I love him so much. Not because I'm scared to go to hell, because I love my Jesus. He's my best friend. He's my savior. He's my king. And I'm ruling with him because he is living inside me. I'm what with him. I'm ruling with him and the devil cannot conquer us because I'm one with Christ. The devil is conquered. Nothing can resist us anymore. So stand in the gap together with Jesus for the people. Call upon people. I said, Lord, pour out your rain, pour out your tear on people and this is really my prayer for all of us in our town, what we are living. We are going to do some work now before Christmas. Christmas is a very good time to share the gospel. Go out and, and share the love of Jesus. Let the living water flow from your spirit out to people's spirit. Because when you speak, you speak from your spirit to people's spirit in the love of Jesus. God bless you all. Thank you so much for listening and share this, uh, that it will be on Facebook, share it with all the friends, share it in your church. Thank you so much. God bless.